Hey everyone, welcome back to the fish room. Today we are continuing our deep dive series on how to build beautiful DIY aquarium stands. In parts one and two, we discussed in depth the material selection and the design of the stand, covering the design principles you need to know to build a solid structure to support the enormous weights that bear down on them. I've built a lot of aquarium stands for this fish room. Every one you're seeing on video right now, actually from very basic functional only stands like these, not so pretty, to nicer looking, more finished ones, such as the stand we built for this 280 gallon acrylic aquarium. And this is the exact same stand I am showing you how to build in this series. And today we are continuing that with the actual assembly of the stand. By the end of this video, we will have a fully usable 125 gallon aquarium stand. Let's dive on in. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do here is we're going to construct the perimeter of the top of the stand, which will be bearing the majority of the weight of the aquarium. So we're pretty much just gonna be making a rectangle here. Now again, we've already talked about all the dimensions uh, and the material selections in previous videos. So if you want more information on that, go ahead and check out parts one and two. For now, we're just going to be assembling this thing. So for this step, you're going to need a power drill. And since we are working with number eight screws, you need a drill bit for pilot holes. Your drill bit needs to be 3 30 seconds of an inch. The reason for that is that is the, the perfect size for working with softwoods, which is what we have here, which we've already covered in part one. And another tool that would be really useful, though not necessary, something that I use a lot are these right angle clamps. So I use these when I'm building stands, when I'm building tanks even. So you just set the pieces in here and it it forces it into a perfect right angle when you clamp it. Now there are lots of varieties of 90 degree clamps on the market. I am using this Wolfcraft brand because it's very sturdy and it has a very deep seat, meaning this will hold a two by four pretty well. So we have this outline set up here and we're working on a flat surface here. Work on as flat a surface as you can find. And what we have here, you can see where these corner clamps really come in handy. We have set them up here. This is the side we're going to start with. We've set these up and uh, the wood is kind of resting on them. And we also have the ends down there as well, just so that again, this is all very level. Now I started off by using another clamp. Uh, clamps really are your friend in this process. So what we've used that we've used this one to first pull these pieces tightly together, nice and snug. And then we tightened up the 90 degree corner clamps to make sure everything was, was a proper 90 degree right angle. And now these are pretty much locked in place. So I can actually take this clamp off now and the wood's not gonna go anywhere. And then what I can do is come in with our drill and drill a couple pilot holes and put a couple screws in. And the other great benefit to these right angle clamps here is think about how these are machined, uh, professionally machined to be perfectly true, to hold the two pieces in a right angle, but also in a flush plane. So think about it, that th this, this edge right here and this edge right here are perfectly flush now. So when we're constructing this, the top is actually gonna be down here. We're gonna flip this whole thing over. The top edge is gonna be a perfectly flush, true plane with all the pieces. So we're gonna go down the line with each cross brace, starting with these ends. And we're also gonna fill in the middle here using these clamps. And then we're gonna put two screws on either end, uh, one near the top and one near the bottom. And we're just gonna work our way down and uh, put this thing together. We covered in part one the types of screws we're using. Now we want two, one close to each edge. 
I'm doing about three quarters inches away from the edge, but anything in that half inch to one inch range is great. And you just screw them in with the power drill and we're good to go. Okay, so we have all the cross braces installed and we've done this spacing of approximately 16 and a half inches uh, in between each brace. And I covered in the part two video of this series why we've done this. So if you wanna learn more about the design principles of this and how we kind of figured out all our measurements, go check that video out. Okay, so we are onto the legs now. You can see something I've done here is I've set the actual top of the stand this particle board that's going to be the top. I've set it underneath the frame that we're building. This is, isn't necessary, but I think it's a nice uh, trick to use to really ensure that you're working with um, a true plane. And I've also weighted down the frame. Again, not necessary, but it's just one of those things that I think helps a lot because it ensures that everything is nice and um, tightly pushed together. So, you know, with wood, even if you've selected straight pieces, as it's dried and as you've cut it down to size, uh, tensions within the wood can cause warping to occur that wouldn't have been there previously. So this, just adding some weight, helps keep everything nice and flat as we're assembling it. So, um, and I'm using just dumbbells here because I have those around my basement here, but you can use, you know, any sort of weight. Or you could even, um, if you're working on an elevated work surface, and you have uh, the space, you could even just clamp all around the perimeter, and that would work too. So what we're gonna do here with the legs is, this is the long piece, the um, what I'll call the guide piece. And we're just kind of, we've kind of just set it here, flush in this corner. And we're going to clamp it in place. We're gonna make sure it's nice and square. We have a square that we're just gonna use to check that everything is in a, a good orientation. And then when we're sure that it's nice and square, we're gonna clamp it. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna clamp it, and then we're gonna insert three screws in a diagonal pattern, just to give us the most bang for our buck with these screws. And also bring one in from the side here. And then once we have this first piece attached, we will come in with the, what I'll say is the load bearing piece, or the most load bearing. It, they all will bear some of the weight. And we'll just kind of set this here. So it's nice, it's just like resting on top of this perimeter structure. Now I'm, I'm struggling here because I'm just working with one hand while I'm trying to record and I haven't actually clamped and screwed these pieces in. But you see, ah, but you get the idea, right? Let me show you what I did. I already attached this leg over here. Let me show you. So we're gonna let this piece just rest on top of this perimeter structure, letting gravity help us form a nice solid connection. Now we do wanna make sure, you, we do wanna use a square to make sure that everything is um, at clean, right angles and such. Um, but we, we do that, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna clamp it to this back piece that we've already installed, the guide piece. And we'd probably wanna clamp it, you probably wanna clamp it up near the top, and then clamp it again, you know, maybe down here near the base, uh, or even in the middle, you know, each piece of wood is gonna be different. Wherever you feel like you need to clamp it to uh, form a very uh, clean, uh, no, no gaps here, right? You don't want any gaps. You want this piece to be square with the perimeter structure, also resting flush against it, and then also have no gaps between it and the guide piece. So then what we're gonna do once we clamp it is we're going to uh, just insert screws. We're just gonna screw them together. Now I have four screws along this length of leg. If you do a shorter stand, you might get by with three. If you do a longer stand, you might want five. Uh, but four for this height that we're building is, is great. And I also came through with this screw at a diagonal from the side going down into the perimeter. Not necessary, but I like to over-engineer my stands. So one way you might build a stand differently than me is if you want extra support on the corners. And the way you can do that is if you cut a second piece that is the same length as this outside one, you can set it right in here. And then you would do the same steps of making sure, squaring it up, making sure everything is nice and flush um, with the joints, 
and then you would um, attach it to both this guide and then also this first load bearing piece. So um, I've already done the math. We did that in the first video and we found that having this many legs on each corner and then a set in the middle is enough to hold a 125 gallon. But if you want to build a stand for an even bigger tank, um, this is one way you could easily add more weight capacity. Okay, so we have all the legs attached now. Oh, and Samson says hi over here. We can get rid of some of that glare from the other tanks. Yeah, yeah, the glare is, you kind of can't really do much about it when you have fish tanks on every wall. But back to the stand. So we have all the legs attached. So the next step is we need to tie all these legs together um, so that they're stable and there's no chance of wobbling. Because even though we've attached them very uh, firmly to the perimeter of the top of the stand, um, you know, it's just, just kind of physics, right? There's nothing holding them in place up here, so they can actually wobble still a bit. And we don't, we don't want to rest thousands, literally thousands of pounds of rock and fish and water. We don't, we don't want to put that weight on top of something that's not stable, right? So there's a very simple solution here. Uh, we, these legs are, are more than enough to bear the weight. We just need to make sure they don't move. So we're going to tie them together, sort of similar to how we, they're tied together here at the uh, perimeter of the top of the stand. But we don't need to go to all this effort. Uh, all we're going to do here, so the original plan, and I'm going to tell you why I say original. The original plan was to just use strips of plywood running along the interior, uh, a six foot strip spanning this length, and of course this side as well then a couple strips running on the side here. That was the original plan because plywood is great for this purpose. So plywood, there's a couple advantages it has to using, you know, say just dimensional lumber, like these two by fours. Um, plywood, it, it's cheaper. So your basic plywood is gonna be cheaper than dimensional lumber. And you can also, also has more spread to it. So these two by fours are three and a half inches wide, right? But when tying these legs together, width is our friend. Uh, the spread is what's important. It is better to have a three quarter inch piece of plywood that is five or six inches wide. That, and you have a screw on each corner, right? And you would have this here, five or six inches wide. That is significantly better than even a two by four. So even though two by fours are thicker, this thickness right here, this extra thickness doesn't really accomplish anything when we're talking about uh, keeping these legs from moving side to side. So what we can do is a much cheaper materials go half this thick with plywood and then you can actually then make it wider because that's what's most important. Now why am I saying plywood instead of the particle board that we're using for the top? Well particle board has very good compressive strength. So with all the weight pressing down on it, that's, that's not an issue. The particle board can hold that compressive um, load. But it's not very good in shear or tensile loads. And since they're, and, and that's what we're trying to prevent here. We're trying to prevent um, shear forces and tensile forces pulling and um, kind of stretching it, right? So, I mean, it, it's still strong, but plywood is better. Uh, so that is why we were going to use plywood on this. I'm not going to though. And you're saying, Evan, you just told us why you want to use plywood. Well, I told you the benefits of plywood, but I actually happen to have just some extra two by fours lying around. Um, they're scrap, um, they're essentially, they're free to me, right? Cause I already have them. So for me, um, it makes perfect sense to just use those, cut those up and use them. And I'm just gonna lay them in, attach them on this inside groove here. This, you know, will work out quite nicely. And yeah, they only give you three and a half inches of width, but for a tank as small as a 125, that is good enough. You know, if we look at the 650 over here, actually, let's look at the 600. You know, I have these strips down here, these plywood strips that are about six or seven inches. You need that for 
as much weight as is on this thing right here. But for this 125 stand, a two by four will be enough. And it actually has a side benefit of, it's gonna make the next step easier. When we get to the step of adding this uh, ven exterior veneer, it'll make that step actually a little easier. So, hey, silver linings, right? What's important here though, regardless of if you're using dimensional lumber or plywood to tie the legs together, is where you put um, the tie-ins, right? So I always like to put them about two inches from what is going to be the bottom of the stand. So the two by four will be right about where my fingers are here. And if I had some plywood, I would make it a little wider and it would look like, you know, this. What you don't want to have happen is you don't want them to be flush with the bottom here. You might think running the, the tie-ins across the floor, like imagine this is upside down and the floor is actually here. You don't, you might think that having extra structure here running across from one leg to the next to the next you might think hey that would actually be good right you have more contact points with the ground that's not how it works um, it might sound like it would be beneficial but it actually creates a lot more problems it, it's a big headache actually so we don't want these tie-ins to be flush with the base of the stand Okay, so we have the legs tied together. So these are not going anywhere. These are going to be very stable. This, this whole thing, this is very sturdy now. And we've, we've flipped it back up right side. So this is starting to look like an aquarium stand now. There's actually only one more step before this thing can be usable as an aquarium stand. There are a few more steps before we're actually done with this because we are gonna finish it in a nice veneer. We're gonna make this thing look good. But to actually use it, if you wanted to stop at this step, we are very close. All we have to do now is just attach this top because we need this stand, right, to be, to have a flat surface top so that it works with flat bottom aquariums. So we're gonna use this particle board like we've discussed. And this is three quarter inch particle board. All we're gonna do is cut it to size and we're going to pretty much just rest it on top here. So you can have separate pieces making up this top. It doesn't need to be one full length piece. It can be, that's great. But uh, for a cost saving measure or if you happen to have some scrap particle board or even plywood lying around, you can cut smaller pieces and uh, bump them together to make one one top. So we're actually going to have two pieces. So I've already cut this piece to the uh, the proper width. I have two of these, uh, but together they're actually too long. So I'm going to cut them both down because what you do need to do, if you're making a, a top that is uh, multiple pieces, you need the perimeter of each piece to rest on one of these joists. The edge, I'm going to cut it down so that the edge is actually here and they're both going to butt up against each other here so that's what we're going to do and then we're just going to kind of screw it in place you don't need a lot of screws i'm probably going to do a screw on each corner maybe 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 one in the middle on each side but yeah so we're going to go ahead and attach these pieces uh cut them down to size a little bit and then attach them and this stand will be pretty much done in terms of its uh, functional capacity and there we have it. This stand is now effectively complete uh, from a functional perspective. We still need to, so the next step, the next video is gonna be wrapping this in a nice veneer to make it look really good and adding doors. So we're gonna add, uh, I think I'm gonna have two doors here. That would just make sense. Um, so yeah, this is uh, good to go. Uh, this is a very structural stand now. I even have the tank on top of it and it got it all lit up to look nice. Uh, so I am looking forward to finishing this project and really having some fun with this aquarium. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I know these have been really long videos. I, I wanted to go very in-depth. I want to tell you everything you need to know, everything that I can think of that would be useful or, or helpful to you. So I appreciate you watching. Um, if you like this kind of content, let me know. Uh, maybe give it a thumbs up. Um, otherwise, take it easy, everyone. I will see you next time.